watch on TV occasionally um, Jesse Waters, and he sent someone out to the beach and talked to people and wanted to know, asked them what they knew about the 4th of July. Most of them, they, they couldn't even get questions right. He would just ask them, okay, who was, who was our first president? Some of them, Abraham Lincoln. You know, I mean, it's just really sad what's going on in our country that they don't realize who we are and what we are and how great we are. So that's why we have Sisters of Liberty, so that we can help instill that in our families. And hopefully, you know, people will become more, not politically minded, but civically minded and understanding what a great nation we are and that we are God's children and that this is his land and his laws. And so we've had some really good judgments that came out of the Supreme Court the last week. And, oh, Satan hates it. <laughs> and the left hates it. And so, isn't it inter we're in interesting times, that's for sure. And Helena told me about, um, a, the three, it's called Three Brothers. It is. And I was listening to them, and they said something that I thought was really interesting. Um, and I hope I don't slaughter it. But they said something about, um, you know, they've heard different people say, why isn't the church growing? anymore. I got the, the right guys? You yeah, yeah, yeah. Why isn't the church growing anymore? And they, their kind of their consensus was we're not going to see a massive growth anymore because we're so close to getting to the end times. We are now seeing the five virgins, five, five foolish and the five um, uh, wise virgins. So that's going to be a shifting of people that are going to fall away. And we also are going to have a shifting of the wheats and the tares. And so the church, they, I think that was their opinion. They said, don't be surprised to see the church divide in half. And, uh, you know, so I don't know. I thought it was kind of interesting. But I, so we're not going to see massive growth anyway. We're going to start seeing sifting of wheat and tares and the sifting of the virgins. So kind of interesting. And then last week, Todd, he talked about murder to get gain. So how many of you listened to Unspoken with Todd Halverson? Unshaken. Unshaken. With Jared Halverson. With Jared Halverson. Okay, I just, why did I just slaughter it all together? <laughs> you had Todd on the line. Four times Jen, in his Jared. last one he's talked about murder to get gain. And I'm Jared like, oh, it's oh my gosh. Weeks. She's ahead. I'm yeah. ahead. It's the Elisha one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and that's where I caught it. He talks a lot about murder to get gain. Yeah, yeah. four times. I'm like, okay, I've never heard that before. And then he says it four times. So I thought that was really fascinating. Was it uh, Hesed uh, or Esed? Hesed. 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 And then you hear it a number of times. You're just going, wow. And it was Halverson that did the same thing. Yeah. Um, approaching Zion, me nibbly. Also, I thought, I know I've heard this. And the master may have principles in there. And it was murder to get gain. And you, approaching Zion is about the economic system. Gotcha. It's, so it's that's where he's right getting there. that from. So, yeah. But I thought found it fascinating that the week you hear it, you hear it again four times. Well, can I add something? Yeah. Well, so I, f I filled you all in last week with, with what was happening with the Levitt family. They have now had to leave the state of Utah because they have been having so many death threats against them and against their children <gasps> that they have, to, they have to move. Oh my gosh. So what has the Utah establishment done to the Levitt family? It's been murder to get gain. Yeah. yeah. They have murdered his reputation, reputation. so that they can get gain. Yep. And I'm sure you saw last Tuesday, we did not get any good candidates. Yep. The establishment, I mean, not including Mike Lee, but, but he was the only one we got. Everyone else was an establishment candidate. So did you love what happened with the Supreme Court and the EPA? The EPA cannot have the power to uh, supersede the uh, federal, or the the Congress. If Congress wants to make laws for mask mandates or whatnot, they can. And see, they just give the power away, and then that way their constituents so don't, don't see them mad, voting. And so it protect, insulates them from looking bad, and therefore just let them be the dirty, do the dirty deed, and then we don't have to be responsible. I can fit it. Well, Andrea, take it away. So, um, Robin saw my, the picture that I have on my binder anyway. Most of you have one of these. If you don't, you can grab it. Is there a way to find that online to make it bigger? It's just kind of hard to read. 
this, the healing graph. Yeah. That's what yeah. I have on the PowerPoint switch, of course. Did you, did you Here's make a that larger one, but it doesn't have the bottom on it. Right. Is this from Medical yeah. Medium, the book? Yes. Oh, I have oh, the book. Oh, it's not from the book. Oh, okay. No, you can go to medicalmedium.com forward slash healing path. If you want to follow along, you can get your own text. It is completely free. The whole program is free. In fact, I'm just going through a very free program that anybody can follow. Okay? This is Healing Path. Yes, Healing Path. Before. Medicalmedium.com forward slash Healing Path. Just like that. It'll go there and it'll say, this is for free. And yes, you put in your email address and it sends it to you, access to it. Now, he has done all 18 of the lessons on audio. So he has transcripts you can read in case you, you can't hear. Uh, but also, he talks about these action steps that you do for each one of these 18 steps. Now, if you look at the picture, it's got the infinity sign on it, which is uh, it's one of my favorite, let's say, the geometric shape. Okay? It's, on, it's on several of my items mm -hmm. of jewelry. Because it's how it's how wisdom works. It is the feeding of love into wisdom, which feeds back to love forever. And ever. This that is the eternal marriage, the celestial marriage of love and wisdom, right? So this is what we're trying to get at anyway. And what Anthony, I believe, he's also put in the picture, the tree of life. Okay, as you can see, it has. Its branches going up to the sun and the roots going down into the earth, and how to actually take steps towards renewing your own body and recreating your health in a new way to, that feeds into love and wisdom. And compassion is one, one of those steps, right? Love is right up there at the top of the page. Love is the very highest point of that infinity sign and right at the top of the tree. And if you can look at the, even the coloring of it, it is the lightest in color as well, which is, is a brilliant thing. But we start at number one, which is basically down at ground level on the left side of the tree. And you'll see that the first step to healing, the first step is fruits. Now, I can back up a little bit because what you were talking about before with food security in America, that's, that's a really important concept to take to heed. Um, Hiding in Plain Sight and Latter-day Responsibility by Connor Boyack both talk about food security. And it's our responsibility as Latter-day Saints to have a garden, right? It's our responsibility. This is Latter-day Responsibility by Connor Boyack. Connor's the great guy who he represented me to the Congress. Yeah, and he helped me. Merrily's son. Right. Exactly. And he says in in this, I'll quote it. It's on page 192 if you want. This is to small farmers suffering from the unfair government backed competition, it is akin to war. Ronnie Cummins, founder of the Organic Consumers Association, frames it this way. It is impossible to coexist with a reckless industry that endangers public health, bribes public officials, corrupts scientists, manipulates the media, destroys biodiversity, kills the soil, pollutes the environment, tortures and poisons animals, destabilizes the climate, and economically enslaves the world's 1.5 billion seed-saving small farmers. It's time to take down the biotech behemoth before the living web of biodiversity is terminated. And this was written in 2012. Okay, so <laughs> this... So, so Trump did $28 billion for the farmers so that he could help heal that. And then yeah. that's all, he just tweeted yeah. yesterday or whatever truth that they're gonna probably break everything that he did to China so then the farmers are gonna be screwed. Right. right now in the Netherlands, the farmers got all of their their, their tractors yeah. on there because they're telling them they can't use fertilizer to get use mm. their own seeds. They want their own seeds. They want their own seeds, mm -hmm. exactly. Seeds. So when Trump tried to fix it and now it's broken again, it, it's, it's up to us really. It's really 
is up to us to to take our health into our own hands, because <laughs> because the Gadianton robbers have gotten over us. They have gotten over us for a very very long time. Okay, if the healing path though is written in correspondence. It's, it, it, Isaiah wrote in the language of correspondences that Avraham Gileadi decoded for us. And Isaiah decoded, for those who are listening afterwards, you can look that up. Um, Swedenborg saw this same manner of writing throughout the Bible, from the Old Testament all the way through to Revelation. And he wrote over a million words to decode it for us, called The Secrets of Heaven. He wrote it in the 1700s. A hundred years before Joseph Smith was born. Who, who's that? Well, that His is. name was Emanuel Swedenborg. Yeah, it's that Sweden as in the country, B-O-R-G. It's Secrets of Heaven. And all of these texts, all the things that he's written, are free to download on the internet at Swedenborg.com. <laughs> you just go to Swedenborg.com. You can start reading it, and it's just as readable as the Book of Mormon is readable, it's, it's not that hard. Um, it's, it was written in Latin, but it has been translated into English. I think after Joseph Smith was... They have a whole channel that discusses, uh, you know, people that discuss Yeah, and the channel is called Off the Left Eye. The YouTube channel is Off the Left Eye because he had the veil lifted from off of his left eye after he was told by Heavenly Father not to eat so much food. <laughs> and he had to change his diet, and he had the veil removed from his left eye, and he was able to see into heaven and write about it for us. And he was told, he was allowed to write about it in such plain words, as Latin was at the time, <laughs> because, because people, we could understand it with our, our current knowledge. So in the 1700s, we could understand what heaven was like, and he explained it for us because we could understand it. And yes? So uh, I had someone texting me because they can't, because we don't have yeah. Zoom, and so yeah, we don't who have is Zoom. he? Emanuel Swedenborg. Okay. Emmanuel so Swedenborg, 1700s. He lived from 1688 to 1772. He had his awakening in 1744. He was already a scientist of an anatomy, among several other things. And I got interested in him because of anatomy, because I was studying anatomy for the practice that I do. And he discovered that when he was researching the brain, um, what neurons were. A hundred years before neurons were named neurons. <laughs> he named them something before that. So um, it's very interesting all of the things that he learned about the brain and its specific connections to heaven and that it is the shape and function of heaven, that um, communities in heaven are, do things like the brain does things on earth. Isn't that interesting that, that the brain Michelangelo's painting of yes. God is, is in a brain. It is. Michelangelo's painting of God is in a brain, right? So <laughs> so about the brain, not Swedenborg. Swedenborg does. Swedenborg. Specifically the brain. He actually wrote a whole treatise on the diseases of the brain, which is before his awakening. But I was reading all of the text, you know, psycho OCD, all of the things that he wrote down as dis disarrangements of the brain. Um, are actually quite accurate to today's um, diagnosis of the brain conditions and what's going on with the brain. And he, he learned this all from his, his study. He was also a polyglot. He knew eight different languages. He was a polymath, which means he, he even discovered some scientists in crystals. He discovered that science and all kinds of other things, mineralogy and he invented some things for the mining industry in Sweden. And that's why his family was knighted by the, the king and queen of Sweden. He became part of the legislature. He, he dealt with um, the economy and <laughs> money and, and how people related to each other. Fascinating guy, Swedenborg. You might want to look into him. Um, 
Now, the gospel of, since the whole scriptures is written in these correspondences, food also is a correspondence for us. Plants are a correspondence for us, which is currently, you would consider it a sealed book. And it's sealed on purpose by industries who don't want you to know that they have biohacked this book and are feeding you pleasure center foods of hyper taste, right? They taste so good that they actually make you create the chemicals of, of love in your mind. So when you go back to last week and Todd's talking about pornography and how men do this because it sets the chemicals off in their brain of a connection to God, a real connection to God. And women actually eat hyper tasting foods. We get more addicted to those foods and preparing them because they connect. They make us produce the chemicals in our brain of a true connection to God. They fix a problem that is a fake fix. All right, it's a fake fix. <laughs> right, yeah, don't take away my pleasure center drug, whatever it is, whatever shape or form it is in, don't take that away from me. What you're describing is what the group of people using medicinal mushrooms are also uh -huh. claiming. Exactly when right. They use those mushrooms, they have a connection with God that they didn't have before. That they didn't have before. Life changing, life changing experience, right? Are you talking psychedelic? Psychedelic mushrooms. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there's, there's people that have left our church. There's a Republican senator who's taken people away from the church mm -hmm. who was like the minority whip in 2015. He started his own church. And they meet, and their sacrament is these medicinal mushrooms. Medicinal mushrooms. And they wow. say they have very powerful, of course, you know, the God that he saw was female and all of this. I'm thinking, oh, you're seeing something all right. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's oh so, <laughs> it's fascinating. It's fascinating what substances can do and how they can be hacked, and the chemical companies have already figured out a way. Well, yeah. and I watched last night, I'm trying try to remember if it was Tucker or Hannity or how um, the, uh, the medical marijuana, mm -hmm. they are pushing it so strongly on kids uh, in high school. It changes their brains. Yeah. It really and does. It really does. And they're pushing it on clear down mm -hmm. to the high school level now. It's a gateway yeah. drug no matter what. It is a gateway mm -hmm. drug, drug mm -hmm. and it, it uh, might... So it's corn syrup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sugar. Sugar. Sugar is like cocaine. Addictive. Yeah. 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 It really is. It yeah. really is. So it's it's fascinating that the first step on this tree of ascension, basically, these different levels of wisdom, is is a tool from Heavenly Father that is whole. It is whole and complete. And the truth is always whole and complete. What Anthony's trying to get at with the spirit of compassion is that the sealed book is open. There is wisdom and food that you can understand with your natural mind. And he wrote a book called Life Changing Foods that is unsealing the book of food. Is that the one that's coming out? Mm -mm. It's been out since 2017 in January, anyway. That's when I got it. Unsealing a book. He's explaining exactly the wisdom in food. So he tells you the spiritual message in potatoes. He tells you the, the emotional message of potatoes. And I'm taking potatoes as the first thing because that's, that was my first experience. And before Anthony, before I have read his books, I was homeless, we were in a hotel room, we had nothing, but my husband got this temporary job at the uh, LDS farm for potatoes in Eastern Washington State. So he brought potatoes to us from the farm because he could get as many potatoes as he wanted to. And so we were in a hotel room. He had one potato that was from here, from as long as my hand is from my elbow to my fingers. Huge, right? Potatoes, 
can be huge, right? <laughs> so we, we had plastic forks and we just, from the lobby, and we stabbed that potato, stuck it in the microwave of all things and, and nuked it puppy and we ate potatoes. I thought I was going to gain weight, you know, I was, I had already, you know, lost a lot of weight and I was doing great and I thought, you know, potatoes just make you fat and, and all of this stuff and sour cream makes you fat. Thank you very much. <laughs> I was talking with some friends in Idaho yeah. and um, nobody's buying their potatoes. Isn't that sad? They're not buying them white. Because they're trying to create the shortage. It's yeah. not enough potatoes. Yeah, they're creating a false shortage. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's our industry. Because she has carbohydrates. Carbohydrates in a potato are combined with the wholeness of a lysine, which kills viruses and bacteria helps and helps your eyes and, and vitamin C. A potato has things that medical science will never discover that are so helpful for you. They are, they are a miracle. They actually support your family bonding experience because there were six of us in a hotel room one hotel room <laughs> and none of us fought we got along better and we were just eating potatoes and none of us got sick it was a fascinating experience it was really humbling <laughs> but it was quite amazing um, and then when I picked up the book, Life Changing Foods. I mean, I was challenged to read it, and I thought there would be something wrong in that book, especially against the word of wisdom, obviously. Okay, so this guy can't be for real. He listens to this weird spirit, and he's been doing it since he was four. And I, I turned to potatoes as the first thing, because, you know, I had a spirit of potatoes, and everything it said in there I had experienced about potatoes. And it was... It was mind-blowing. It was life-changing. And everything I read about the other foods, it was almost like I had to, because it was so obvious as a farmer, like a farmer can tell you these things, that how the plant grows, what circumstances it has to overcome, the fact that it records the information of overcoming that a survival instinct, you could say, of this particular plant goes into you. That intelligence is then recorded into your cells and it stops your entropy. It stops your failing. It brings you up to the next level. There are foods that are resurrection foods that rise out of the ashes after there's a fire. Well, Isn't that yeah. interesting, the miracle of the potatoes? It's, it's interesting. And that they said plant potatoes everywhere in the, in the Netherlands and all that. And yes. They gave them for World War II and it ended. They gave them to their enemy. Yes. And then brought peace. Yes, exactly. And to amazing. share, to share food. Mm -hmm. St. George almost died if it weren't for you know, the member of the church, George, oh, you know, I told them to plant potatoes, they were dying. And guess what? <laughs> potatoes saved their lives in St. George. And yeah, that's what's easy. called St. George. And they're so easy to grow. They grow in my almost my desiccated needle. backyard. <laughs> that's true. about potatoes is that once it starts growing, you have to add more dirt. Yes. So what is that psychologically? It needs opposition. It, it thrives on being trampled. It actually, yeah. yeah. You, keep, you, you literally mm -hmm. cover the, the, the greenery yes. with another layer. Yes, you, 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 you bury it, you rebury it. Bury it. It does, it so does. It, it overcomes opposition. It overcomes opposition. It's nourishing, it's comforting. It's, uh, that's its, its spiritual, mental, you know, emotional capacity. That's why we have them at funerals. <laughs> we have no. potatoes, no. you know, because they help us to be comforted in that time and bring us closer to that family member who's passed on. It's amazing, but I mean, it's the cheese on the potatoes <laughs> the funeral that's going to make you fat. But it's, if you just had potatoes, 
it would just be it would just be amazing, right? So we just need some recipes for for them without the added fat, and we'd be fine. Do you, do you want a, an easy one? Yeah, go ahead. A little salt and olive oil. Yeah, some salt, a little olive oil. As good as butter, mm -hmm. and salt. Not quite as good as sour. I know. Yeah, but there's something to that. Yeah. Salsa is good. Salsa on really potatoes, good. exactly. And I do my veggie uh, chili, and I put that on my potatoes, and that goes really well. Green beans with salsa. Green beans. Stir it in. Salsa. Makes a, ca a casserole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. potato casserole. Potato casserole. Right? Yeah. Um, loving food. Yeah. It's something that's so easy to do. You take your fresh potato, you dip it in your olive oil, mm -hmm. um, you put it on your baking sheet. And you take crushed um, rosemary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And then you put it in the oven mm -hmm. and make it at 350 degrees until it's about crispy. And oh, you will love it. Next yes, time. I do. I love that. I always do bulk cooking with potatoes especially and sweet potatoes and all kinds of. I just put all the veg in the oven and bake it for my weekly thing. Mm-hmm. Yep, some fresh salsa. I do love guacamole. Now, I'll tell you, avocados have a very similar um, construction. So they are actually the most like mother's milk on the planet. Very, very nourishing to you. They have a lot of glucose in them, a lot of sugar. They're one-third sugar and one-third fat and one-third protein. So they have fats in them. So but you know, they have, if you have other things too. Problem, it fixes it. Avocados, yep. right? Avocados are amazing. One day. So that's a fruit for you. So Costco has frozen avocados. Yes. So if you stick those in a smoothie, mm -hmm. it's like cream. Yes. Which one? Because not all of them carry yeah. it. Mine in Saratoga Springs has it. Yeah. The Lehigh one does. Right? Is that Lehigh yeah. or yeah? Lehigh. Lehigh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the best thing about avocados. Get them when they're on sale for less than 99 cents each, and they're getting, you know, and you just buy the whole thing. You just freeze them yourself. You can put them, you could take them out of their uh, covers and take the seed out, slice them in half, stick them in a Ziploc baggie, stick a straw on the side, suck the air out, seal it, and stick it in the freezer. That's it. You don't need preservatives. You don't need lemon juice or anything like that. They stay nice and green if you suck the air out of that bag. Did and they're perfectly the fine. No, nope, to take the sleeves off, take the shell off of it. Yeah, you take the skin off of it. Take the seed out. Um, I haven't dried avocados. That's a good question. They freeze dry really well. Do they do? Oh, that's great. Have you okay. done the avocados? Because I've never seen them. You can freeze dry them, but they don't last long. Two years is all they will last because of the fat content. Yeah, they do oh, have a high so fat content. Good for long -term. I didn't know That's that. Do you freeze dry them? They don't last long term. There's too much fat in them for them to yeah, last. So they have. have about it, they're like chocolate. They'll have about a two year shelf life freeze dry. Uh -huh. Same with brown rice. Uh -huh. Yeah, because of the fat content. See, so see, our foods have oils in them already. That's the thing. Anthony talks about Dr. McDougall, several others, uh, Mastering Diabetes guys, all of these say the fat you eat is the fat you wear, <laughs> right? They do the same thing all the time. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. That's, that's basically what it is. Your liver has so many things to do. It's not going to be able to deal like the first thing it deals with is fat to keep it from going to your heart and giving you a heart attack and to keep it from going to your brain and giving you a stroke it will just simply take care of the fat first so what do I do with my Sicily orange chocolate gelato <laughs> oh hey <laughs> you know I know yeah you could give it to the neighbors yeah, you could do that. There's all kinds of options, right? So, but it is, it's truly, the, it's the same. So when you are healing, when you have conditions, okay, when you have some kind of a, any kind of symptom, we'll call it, I don't know, anxiety, depression, acne, eczema, Lyme, gut problems, brain fog, weight issues, migraines, bloating, vertigo, psoriasis, cysts, fatigue, whatever, whatever you've got. If you've got something, if you've got something, right, cut back on avocados, right brown rice and, and the things you know have more fat content nuts and seeds and things like that until you're healed okay then you can introduce it back in it's fine but but 
in a whole condition, foods have fat in them. That's how we got corn oil and soybean oil, because they have fat in them, right? Yes. Do you go along with the food combining rules and eat food in the morning? I eat food all day long. Yeah, I eat fruit all day long. The only thing that I, I separate slightly during the day is I separate bananas from tomatoes. Uh, a quote, I guess. We still sometimes remember that we cannot be free if our minds and voices are controlled by somebody else. But we neglect to understand that we cannot be free if our food and its sources are controlled by someone else. Okay, so this is, it's a really important quote, right? There's, okay, Henry A. Wallace, 1942, 1945 about World War II. He's the Vice President of the United States at the time, and he said, food is fundamental to the defense of the United States. On a foundation of good food, we can build anything. Without it, we can build nothing. We want to make sure that everyone in the United States has in his diet enough energy, enough bone, blood, and muscle building food, enough vitamins to give that feeling of health plus. We want to make sure that our millions are so fed that their teeth are good their digestive systems healthy, their resistance to premature a old age enhanced through strong bodies and alert minds. That's a really good quote too. And then another one by Harry S. Truman, same about same time. In the long view, no nation is healthier than its children or more prosperous than its farmers. And that's when the Victory Gardens were going on in the 1940s for the war. In the 1918s, the, there was something called the Women's Land Army. So the women got together and they were the farmers, and the men went off to war. In the 1940s and in the 1918 area, our, our women <laughs> fed over more than 50% of our food to our Americans was grown by women, grown by us. In the 1940s, the Victory Garden also produced about 40% of what we ate in America. It was just the backyard garden. And we could do so again if we wanted to. And I know Russia, when it's hard. All the collectives after communism took over, 80% yeah. of all the produce of the whole nation came from the private backyards. Yeah, private backyards. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think we could do it again. But I think we don't even have this connection to food anymore in America. And I don't see any of us getting, like, I don't think the general population of America has good teeth, strong digestive systems, healthy r resistance to premature old age. I think that we are getting sicker sooner. We are dying um, of our brains actually decaying. President um, yeah. George F. Benson said we're eating ourselves to an early grave. Yes. Benson said that and he said he we need a generation like under Daniel who will not eat the king's meat, right? Who will be healthy in their in their minds and in their bodies. We need this generation and I don't think he got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the foods have been altered. I don't need I don't even like the watermelons. I'd rather have the seeds in them because mm -hmm. it was a sweeter watermelon. Mm -hmm. Yes, seeds, like seeded that. watermelon and you I can find. I can't tell when the cantaloupes are ripe because they've been altered. And yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, okay, it's rotted inside, but how do you tell? You can't mm -hmm. smell them or anything. I know. It's, I it's know. true. It's hard. But fruit is it's important. So let's go to that first step on the healing path, and I will read that to you. Okay, fruit contains an incredible amount of essential nutrients and antioxidants that significantly slow the aging process. They give us the energy we need for healing and thriving and are critical to our life force. Delight in them every day. So that's just on your papers that you can't read because the writing's too tiny. Or you can go to Healing Path. That's number one. Okay, and now if you would like to do the little exercise with it. Because this was in the Z paper as well, you guys, who we studied this, right? It was things that actually help you to translate your own body, okay, to never die, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really very interesting. By the fruits you shall know them is a really interesting way 
of correspondence in Swedenborg's time, he said, fruits were a representation of your thoughts. And if you think about today in our culture, it's our thoughts, it's our discussion. And by this discussion, we know what somebody's inner desires are, what, what their fruits are, what their discussion is, what their words are saying is actually what their insides are too. So that's by their fruits you shall know them, the correspondence of it. So here we have fruits. The number one assignment is make a list of your favorite fruits below. Include fruits of any kind, tropical, stone fruits, melons, berries, grapes, core fruits like apples and pears, avocado is a fruit, dates and vegetable fruits like the tomato or the cucumber and the squashes are all vegetable fruits, right? So there's seeds on the inside. Now, the next step is how often do you eat these fruits in a day? Any fruit? Do you eat one a day? Or do you eat one a week, maybe? Maybe one a month. Just, just list that, like how often you eat them. Okay, and then for the next week, there's us on the back page of it. And of course, this is free for any of you to download. You can print it out if you want. For the next week, make a note whenever you eat fruit of any kind and come back and mark it down below. Include what types of fruit you ate and an approximate idea of how much. And it gives you an example. Two fruits, one banana, handful of grapes, handful of raspberries, two dried apricots, one avocado, three dates, two glasses of fruit smoothie with blueberries and banana, however you eat it, right? Once you've added fruit consumption for the week, it's time to reflect on how much you're eating. Fruit is the first essential step of the healing path, and it's critical you are eating it every day or almost every day. If you aren't consuming fruit every day, it's important to think about how you can start doing so. Think about the fruits you listed as your favorite at the start of the activity shoot. Cheat. How how do you love to eat them? When do you love to eat them? And so it gives you these examples of how to start eating fruit too, so that you have several different ways or options. Maybe you could think about it a different way. But if you understood the intelligence in fruit, some people don't even eat them until they know what they're good for, right? <laughs> so like me, I avoid papaya like the plague. It's too creamy of a weird melony, like, Texture. They used to be yummy, but so now they're crazy. All GMO. Yeah. yeah. You have to get the larger ones because the smaller ones are GMO. You've got to get the merit all large. Um, and not the ones grown in Hawaii. <laughs> so it's so weird, but that's what that's what's gone on, right? And get but the solo papaya. It's pink in the middle. Where at? Yeah. Like Where? And in Hawaii. In Hawaii. And you oh, squish the small juice one. and oh my gosh. Yeah. You'll eat them all day long. Yeah. <laughs> So I should try that. I should try that. You know, I've tried that. I've tried a cherimoya and I didn't like it. I was, it was kind of like a papaya, but in an apple shape and green. And what papaya is because of the bromelain that is in it. Yeah. And it helps to do the digestive for the body. That's more than just that, but that is good. But it also has the spiritual properties to it and the emotional properties to it. And a papaya on a papaya tree, it grows on this little stick tree, but it's this huge fruit, right? And it grows there in the hot tropical sun that would actually burn us to death if we, we laid there in the hot tropical sun, right? We couldn't handle it. But a papaya takes all of the sun's energy, which we know is Jesus Christ, which is what the DNC says, right? Okay, it says <laughs> the sun is Jesus Christ. It takes Jesus Christ's intelligence and it puts it right into you. All of that intelligence right from the sun goes right into you. The same with a mango, that orangey lusciousness goes right into you from the sun. Yes? What about fruit in the season? Yes. Okay, this is great. And Anthony does, does have an um, audio on this in the healing path about fruits in season, mangoes especially. And he says, wherever it grew, wherever it ripened or will ripen, it is ripe. So commerce, tropical fruits are ripe when we get them and we can eat them. Wherever it grew, it came ripe and it got shipped to us or the farmers knew it would get ripe by the time it got to us, right? Because farmers know their trees. 
some farmers are stupid and pick their bananas too early and they go straight from green to brown, right? That's not good because <laughs> that's not a banana you can eat. Um, but bananas, they come green, but they know that they're going to come to the perfect ripeness by the time we eat them. Okay, and mangoes are the same way. They know when they're going to get ripe. They pick them when they, you know, just in time for us to get them. And the kiwis also travel a long time still in a healthy state for us to get them from New Zealand and wherever. And now we can grow them in Mexico and, and America. Yeah. That comes to me is why prayer over your food is mm -hmm. so amazing. They actually did a study where the frequency is higher mm -hmm. after you've prayed on your food. Yes, exactly. It's gratitude, but it actually, there is an, uh, an actual physiology that changes, mm -hmm. and they actually test it. Yeah, exactly. So now that there's scientific evidence, ways to measure this, but the most important thing is that you hold it. Like, you hold that mango when you pick it out of the store, because it's been picked by other people's hands. Other people's hands have touched it all along the way, but you hold it and it starts to resonate with your frequency. Hold it for a couple of minutes, and then you can peel it, and the process of peeling it, things like that, it comes to your frequency. It, it does its thing that it can do just for you. That's the most amazing thing about the tools that Heavenly Father's given us. Do you think that he would make things that aren't so powerful? No, no, they're gonna be powerful because they have to go and they have to fight all the designs and the evils of mankind not just you know <laughs> not just some things but everything mankind can do it has to overcome it's that tool in the word of wisdom that can overcome anything so fruits fruits are just that and then there's an exercise your healing exercise is to pick some fruit picking fruit is one of the most wonderful ways of supporting your body your heart your spirit and your soul if you have some fruit trees in your own garden, this exercise will be easy for you. If you don't have your own fruit trees, ask a friend, a family member, a neighbor, or acquaintance who has fruit trees if you could come pick some fruit. Or make an outing of it and plan to go to a fruit orchard, farm, or forest where you can pick fruit. Picking berries, apples, and grapes are popular options. If you aren't well enough right now to pick some fruit, ask a family member or friend to go get you some fresh organic berries or other organic fruit from a farmer's market for you to enjoy so that you can get the rich healing properties of just picked fruit okay so in the time and the season and our area it's important to have fruit right so at becky's farm she has um she has raspberries we can all go and pick raspberries if you want to pick raspberries and um, my friend becky in eagle mountain so i i have access to and I, they're not on yet. Well, no, raspberries at Melanie's heart are raspberries. Her raspberries are ripe right now at my friend's house. Yeah, picking raspberries. It's a great. All right. Does anybody else have raspberries or anything like that? Cherries? You have you have a tree? Blackberries, raspberries, and strawberries. Awesome. We can all go to her place and pick raspberries, blackberries, and strawberries. Well, you'd probably clean them all out. That's all you <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to be armed. That's our responsibility, right? Okay, so we, we, have, so we have foods that we can get. You can get it from friends. You can contact me. We can all pick. It's the most lovely experience. And there's a meditation that, that Anthony does called the Fruit Picking Meditation. You can get it on Apple iTunes or whatever. And he, it's a meditation where you just think about the times that you have picked fruit because it's, it, heals your, it heals you too. It heals your heart, it heals your soul and your spirit to go back to nature, to be connected to the earth and to start there, right? It starts at the earth level. So here on our, this is the, this is the paper that is our ascension tree, right? On the divine feminine. And the earth is right here, right? So when we start at the earth level, we start our healing from the foundation up. I was watching a video of the temple re restoration in Salt Lake. The renovation, they had to dig the whole foundation out from under the temple. Mm -hmm. It's such a correspondence to our bodies because we are, some of us are in such a bad place with our bodies that we, we have to dig out the entire foundation practically 
basically, right? And it, uh, we'll be on this weird scaffolding to protect us while we are digging out our foundation. And greens is not the healing food, okay? The fruits and vegetables come first in the word of wisdom. They come first. They have to heal out that foundation. You can put grains in after you're healed to be your staff of life, to keep you going, to give you your source of calories to burn through during a day. But at the beginning, uh, that's not, weed is not the first thing, okay? Fruit is the first thing, yeah. Does sprouting your grains change them in any way? Yeah. Closer to a fruit type? They go into the next number two state, which is leafy greens. Okay, so go to step number two. Leaf it's a live food. Leafy greens like spinach, kale, romaine, and butter lettuce are high in minerals and trace minerals that our organs, connective tissues, and our central nervous system need to heal. So enjoy daily in salads and juices and smoothies. You can combine your leafy greens with your fruits. You can combine them. Yes. So when you're sprouting your greens, Yes. Yeah. Do they actually have to be sprouted to the leafy state, or can you use them just in the like a sprout? You can use them just sprouted. I like to have some green on them. If they're sprouted, though, they have the life in them. They have that new, new growth and new life, and that gives you that, you know, that sudden. If you need new growth and new life, that sudden spurt of energy. That's that's where they're at. Okay, and microgreens especially are amazing. <laughs> the sulforaphane in broccoli sprouts is anti-cancer, and uh, crispy cancer is an amazing um, witness of, of the power of food to heal cancer. So if you've ever, or if you're dealing with that, it's one of the greatest tools. So leafy greens combined with those fruits, very helpful for you. And I could read the steps of fruits, uh, vegetables, uh, leafy greens. Just write down what leafy greens you like to eat, you know, et cetera. There's, there's so you printed exercises. So you printed that uh, website for mm -hmm. medical meeting. Yeah, I'm just covering that okay. step by step. I know I, I'm trying to get through it in time. All of this that's on your PowerPoint is yeah. in there as well? It's in there. Okay. Yeah, it's on the PowerPoint. So I can, I can forward you the PowerPoint. It's doing. Okay, so vegetables. Three, vegetables. Vegetables are high in fiber, which sweeps impurities and bacteria out of the intestinal tract. They cleanse the liver, and they support the body in functioning optimally. Enjoy vegetables in salads and soups and stews or as a snack. So these are your, these are your healing things. Okay? And you'll notice it's in the foundation of the tree. One so. of the things that we love, love to do this time of year, you know, because it's so nice outside, is to grill our vegetables. Oh, yeah. yeah. And anything that you can eat as a fresh vegetable can be grilled. Mm -hmm. You take a little uh, butter with lime juice and cayenne, mm -hmm. and then you baste the vegetables with it, especially squash. Mm -hmm. but grilled squash, uh, grilled onions, yeah. Um, we'll even take the potatoes. See, the peppers are really good with them. Yeah, the grilled I peppers. Do that a lot. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. 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 Yeah.
don't do it while you're while you have symptoms, right? If you have symptoms, your body is not in a good place to, to handle it. So hydration, number four. Staying properly hydrated allows our bodies to detoxify, flush out the kidneys, release impurities, stay alkaline, and clean out lactic acid. To stay hydrated, drink several glasses of water a day. It doesn't say how many. Okay, so just stay, stay hydrated. We have a problem with chronic inflammation or chronic dehydration in America simply because I think we get it from the pioneers. They didn't want to go to the outhouse in the middle of the night, so they did not drink a lot. <laughs> I wouldn't want to go out to the outhouse either in the middle of the night. So, um, and I think it's just ingrained in us, so we just have to overcome that. And you know what I've noticed? The more I stay hydrated, the more I drink throughout the day, actually it rejuvenates my bladder and helps me to hold in so I don't have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. And that's really, that's been helpful. Okay, so five. It's <laughs> it's Does anybody have a lot of water. I still have to get up in the middle of the night. So there's something going on with the bladder. Yeah. And that would maybe be a pathogen or virus or bacteria that's long, long ingrained or, or static. Like it's stuck there. And you can kick it out because fruits will kick it out. Fruits can do that. They, they have that human property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cabbage, the yes. super yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. And if you do, if you want to build muscle, if you're like into the building muscle stage after you've done all your healing, the, the things that build your muscle, according to Anthony, are the, the critical clean carbohydrates from your fruit, along with the salts the mineral salts that are in your vegetables and your green leafies and those two things and using your muscles three <laughs> those three things are what builds muscles right it's push -ups. Uh, yeah push-ups or burpees or whatever i do i do another exercise so then there's sunshine number five sunshine not only provides vitamin D, it stimulates healing mechanisms in your body and it strengthens the immune system. Enjoy a few minutes of sunshine every day. There are, there are pathways in your body of healing that are not recorded in medical science right now that are in addition to de me metabolizing vitamin D or making vitamin D from the sun. Okay? And there's so many things that the sunshine does. Light. We need real light. So when they tell us to stay indoors for our health and safety, that's a problem <laughs> for us, right? So we, we, can, we, we can know this. It's kind of obvious. And there are certain things in sunscreens that are commercially available that are toxic. <laughs> anyway, it's just my thing. Okay. You know, one thing that I researched that you can use for sunscreen is is the co either coconut oil or carrot oil mm -hmm. um, protects you from being sunburned. It's a good idea. Healthy. Yeah. So put it on, on your outside. It doesn't make it worse. No. 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 It's no. Protective. It's protective. Uh -huh. So just pure coconut oil, you're talking on? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Coconut oil is, 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 it smells good too, yeah. <laughs> it's really good. Um, and then sleep, sleep is number six. Sleep completely rejuvenates the body, completely. It strengthens the adrenal glands and it reinforces the endocrine system. It helps rebuild and recreate new brain cells it leaves you feeling refreshed and energized, okay? So your sleep is the most important between the hours of 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., okay? So sleep is important between these hours, the most important between these hours. These are when your, your organs cycle through their process. So if you can even be in a... a your know, horizontal position for those hours. Even if you are awake and can't go to sleep, can't, you know, you can pretend. Okay, you can pretend and, and your body will do its thing from 10 to two, okay? And if you have to work a, a night shift 
for your life, for your job, corresponding hours in the daytime, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. should be taken advantage of when you're sleep, when you're sleep cycle, okay? So just letting you know, that's the sleep advice. for 30 years, Ugh. but would alternate every other month, about oh. some days. Oh, wow. Were you able to get sleep in those 10 to 2? Eight hours a day. Uh -huh. Time. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. That's good. That's probably the only way you can do it because it really does mess with your circadian. <laughs> well, you survive. Still survive. <laughs> yes. Did I, did I hear? Did anybody else hear? The hours you sleep before midnight, mm -hmm. it's as if they're doubled. Yeah. As if they're what? Doubled. 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 Yeah. The hours you sleep before midnight are as if they were doubled. It's really important, those those couple of hours. And I do. I have friends who, they never get to sleep by, until one. And like, you're, I know you're in your 20s, but you're, you're, wasting. you're wasting your life. Your whole life. Okay. Seven. Creativity. Now we have reached above ground. Okay. So the, it lightens up here on the color scheme of your paper. And this is where we kind of get to out of bed, <laughs> okay? So, so many people have all of the problems and they even need more nutrition than just, this, than just whole foods. They just need to nutritize their body. They are in such a bad place. Um, and in case that, that is a necessity, it's um, this Cleanse to Heal book has, has some special tools for people who have specific conditions that are not responding to whole foods, per se, okay? But, but once we get to a place where we feel that we can do something, creativity is a really important step to healing. Um, creativity brings freedom and healing to the spirit and the soul by allowing self-expression and the release of stagnant emotions. You can be creative in hundreds of ways, including singing, dancing, writing, creating arts, sharing ideas, and more. And I think this group is really useful for, actually, this group is useful for 7 to 18, like all of these things. This is what Sisters of Liberty is all about. So you, we want to create freedom, and we want to be creative, and we want to support those who are creative, each other, hopefully, you know? I, our purpose, number eight, purpose, having a purpose. Our souls always know our purpose. Even if we're feeling directionless, our souls still know why we're here. If you are feeling out of touch with your purpose, focus on finding joy and service in your daily activities. This will help you to reconnect. Okay, so our soul's purpose is connection yes that's sort of like what the, the church teaches about if you're feeling down you serve yes you serve you have a purpose, you have a purpose exactly and victor frankel wrote a wonderful book the man's search for meaning about his experience in in auschwitz and i um visited auschwitz and i <laughs> i read his book and oh, you should read his book. <laughs> it's really important to have a purpose because that's what brought people through the most horrific times that could be inflicted by mankind upon itself. We think we are there now. Yeah. We are there again. I cannot believe that we're there again. Oh, but, this time it's in America. Yes, and we will be tearing each other apart. I believe that this is going to happen over a cup of gasoline or something okay. stupid in the oh, in the very near the future. In the blue states, I don't mm -hmm. think they'll have any red states. I hope and pray. Oh, that's nice. We're not yeah, a red state. We're yeah. a purple state. Yeah, we're okay. all either purple or... I just think you have Christ with you, you're not going to do that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you're not going to do that. Yeah. Exactly, because yeah. we'll have purpose. There are people who will kill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so you get there doing to the Levitt family. Yeah. Normal people are threatening to kill them. Mm -hmm. What is the only thing? They just don't have connection. What is the only thing that keeps us in Christ? It's our belief in Christ. Mm -hmm. When you lose your, when you lose yeah. touch with that belief, that and most people have, yeah. then, then when things go wrong, 
Yep. Yeah, when things go wrong, normal people fly off the handle. Our sense of purpose is missing. Our sense of connection has been severed by the powers that be. And we, if we don't have it ourselves, if we don't reach out, um, and if we don't reach out right away, I think we're screwed. This country is screwed. <laughs> we, we're so in a bad place. We have been given so much, so much, and we're... Oh, such a bad example to the rest of the world. <laughs> I'm just I think there's more of us than them. I believe we, we have more Christian people. Oh, there's no doubt. But, yeah. but when you have yeah. a group, a cabal that is yeah. cheating mm -hmm. and telling and lying to the masses, yeah. the people who don't meet in groups like this don't know and they don't they so they believe the lies mm -hmm. but th i believe we're waking up and i believe 80 percent of us now know that uh, i i believe that they now know the other side is lying mm -hmm. and so i think we're we're on the other end of starting to heal yeah i think we're on the path of healing yeah i think so i hope so i think so i i think our vision of what actually is contained in the millennium is is so shrouded we we can't even picture it in our mind can you imagine okay can you imagine growing food out of the ground just by praying and having it come up out of the ground like the prophet jonah experienced when he was you know <laughs> it was right there and a gourd grew up in a day okay so it's just pointing <sighs> if you didn't need tractors if you didn't need diesel, if you didn't need fertilizer, if you could call upon God and the nature, the earth, and to provide you the food that you required that day. That's what faith is. Faith that's what faith is, and that's what miracles, and that's what the millennium will be. Okay? And this is what the prophet is telling us to pray oh, and miracles. expect miracles. Faith. Exactly. Uh -huh. That's right. So, so the prophet is trying to tell us, Pray for miracles. Expect miracles. Because this is, what, this is what the millennium is, right? Our millennial life is mostly the science of nature. It will be what we're most engaged in, is raising children. It will be the importance of the child. It will be the importance of nature in our lives. We will be able to control the weather through faith. And in Jesus Christ, right, it will, it will enable us to have the growth of the food we need right when we need it. And we won't even need to have shelter because the temperature of the planet, our temperature will be 70 degrees all the time. It will be the perfect temperature for us. And we'll be able to speak to each other without using words. Right? This is the millennium. <laughs> no, this is this paradisical glory of the planet. If you can imagine that, we can understand those words, right? But we can't really feel them. Well, I can feel them, but I'm trying to get other people to feel this is what we're expected to do to have no poor among us because we don't need money, because we don't need doctors, because we don't need lawyers, because we understand one another. And we're connected to each other. Yeah, exactly. We can create a millennium today. Yeah. We can practice now. Right. In our own homes. Right. In our own lives. In our own lives, in our own homes, to be understood, to understand. I did. Uh, you can pray for a parking spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's interesting how it works. Uh, you can pray for uh, when you're going fishing. Yeah. Uh, hunting. Mm -hmm. If you're in tune, mm -hmm. I use it as a male of the power of the priesthood, but it's the same power of the priesthood that, that the sisters receive in the temple. Mm -hmm. But you can, you have to practice. You have to, to practice. Into that right. on, a, on a personal level. You have to. And, and really, these are all different kingdoms that we're involved in. Our first kingdom, our body, our self, our temple, is what we have to have faith in first, right? Faith is what pulls us out of our darkness and fear. And when we are fearful, we are not able to see or feel or act clearly in life. Faith 
is the armor that protects you. So that's what Anthony is talking about. Spirit of compassion is telling him faith is our armor. Faith in just our own ability to heal is really important when we're digging our plate out, out of the, the dregs, the evils and designs of men. I'm, I'm calling it that because that's really what is causing all of our misery <laughs> is the evils and designs. Things that are of a telestial level they will fall apart mm -hmm. before we can enter into the right they if clean together those in your life mm -hmm. then you are entering into your body and if you have exactly. faith you're not pulling in that negative energy from those and right. you'll be protected right right yeah yeah you have to really dedicate yourself to a life of nonviolence where you're not going to kill for gain like there's there's that whole concept of covenant path right that's our covenant we make and prayer, prayer connects us to the higher source. When we pray, our message is heard. And these messages are forever written in the universe. Pray for the healing for yourself and others, and you will strengthen your connection to the higher source, is what Anthony calls it, to God, to Heavenly Father, right? To Jesus Christ. This is our, this is our higher source. This is what we connect to. And... And when we have that prayer list going around, it has been such a fabulous experiment to see what it's done in my family's lives. No idea how amazing. <clears throat> you probably have your own testimony of that prayer list. But thank you for starting it. And I don't know whose idea it was. Nancy Nelson. Nancy Nelson. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it was amazing. Thank you. And I use it. I love it. It's in the scriptures when the Savior was uh, in the New World, in the Book of Mormon, he was very careful with his wording because when it comes out of his mouth, it is. It is. <laughs> it literally so, is. The, and the prophets, uh, when they're speaking for God, they're very careful about their words. Mm -hmm. We're studying Elijah. Elijah. Mm -hmm. uh, their yeah. words made it so. That's true. <laughs> That's very true. Three and a half years, it didn't rain. Mm -hmm. uh, but as soon as he said it's going to rain, that little cloud shows up. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's true. So it's really real. That's why our <laughs> prayers, uh, I like what you said about our words send it up to Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is forever. It is forever written in the universe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. And then the Metana archives, it says a prayer goes out. It goes out on this great loop, and it comes back, kind of on the eternal loop. Right? You did. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it great? It's. Yeah. Yeah, and the concepts that, uh, was it Timothy, that he talked about faith in several places in the, in the archives, that they come together with faith in healing as well. So it, it all comes together. Prayer. Yeah. It was also really powerful for us because as we read that, then um, he talks about what sacrifice really is and mm -hmm. the power of fasting. And yeah. The sacrifice of our like our really our whole soul and our desire on the altar and um so we read that on our way to palmyra so yeah we fasted for like a day and a half before we went to the temple and we had yeah. this amazing experience at the temple yeah to just back up what we had read to, you're right it supports itself and it builds on itself and it just says okay here's potential like you can see it <laughs> like it becomes real in your life um it is verse 13 of D&C 89. It is doctrine and covenants, the word of wisdom, verse 13. If you want to, it's an invitation. You can dedicate your life to pleasing the Lord. You could. You could. It's there. It's there. And it's not by commandment. He's not making us do it. He's just saying, it would please me if you would do this. But... You can choose. You have agency. I so, had a thought. Yeah. <clears throat> when you said it's forever written in the universe, yeah. the thought that came right into my mind is because the angels are writing it. Yes. They, when you give a testimony, and when you're praying, 
they literally are keeping scripts. Mm -hmm. So when you said it is written in the universe, mm -hmm. it is. It is. they're assigned to write. They are. That's right. That's right. You've got to have a job in the heavens. And, you know, scribe is a good job to have. Um, it also, I believe, any artwork that you do, any stroke of a pen, any paintbrush, any, anything that you do creatively, that is also recorded. So in case your house burns down and all your art is gone, it still exists. Right? It is all in heaven. In case somebody comes and they take all of your poetry and they destroy it, It is still written in heaven. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, support. <laughs> 11. Support from friends, family, or community is important for healing. We gain strength and reinforcement from feeling connected. Simply sharing with someone can bring a lot of healing. So in the millennial... <coughs> We're going to be healing a lot of people to begin with because, because they'll be alienated from their, all of their connections. And just bringing them into community is, is part of the healing. It really is because heaven is people, <laughs> right? Heaven is community. It is people. It's who we're connected to and who we feel the most... Um, vibrational sameness with and you're going to go straight to that community when you pass you might as well build it here is such a first mm -hmm. uh, use tool yes for people who are trying to do feet right, right. Like what they do. Yes. Okay. everybody stay home everybody stay home isolate yourself don't touch anyone no hugging no, no. clothes don't mm -hmm. share yeah. when you need that energy Right, because we need, and we do. In the thyroid healing book, he talks about how your thyroid is an outgoing organ. It actually gives off frequency, radio frequency like hormone, to strengthen other people's thyroids in close vicinity to you. And it is a giving organ beyond your free will or agency. So it will give anybody who needs it will give it energy if it has it. And it will ask for a request from people around you, energy, if it needs it, if it's low in this hormone. So this, this frequency hormone, is, uh, it gives no matter how you feel about the person. <laughs> so I don't know if you've ever been around a person whom you didn't particularly enjoy their conversation or their mannerisms or something. But you felt good in their company anyway, <laughs> right? There's kind of this strange, strange attraction. It's maybe because their thyroid was healthier than yours at the time and they were giving some thyroid to you. They were giving some hormone to you that, that you needed. Or, or else there's certain people that are attracted to you that you just want to push them away physically, right? But they just, they come into your space, like your personal space and like hang out in your personal space. And that's usually because their thyroid is low and your thyroid is high and they, they're sensing that, their body's sensing that frequency and they want some of it. So they'll hang out around you, even though you're like, eh. <laughs> Could be. Yeah, it's better than vampires, I guess. I don't know. Thank you to the thyroid. Yes. It doesn't matter. Usually, there's enough thyroid left over that it makes that hormone. It doesn't matter. It can be a homeopathic amount. It, as long as there's something there, one or two cells, something like that, it's going to be making that or requesting that thyroid hormone. And what that thyroid hormone does is it will scan your body every couple of minutes to create homeostasis to make sure that you are, um, your energy reserves are in their proper places. If you have enough for your liver to keep going, you know, all of this stuff. Your thyroid's really very important as a coordinating organ. Does it work with the chakras at all? You're speaking of words, yeah. It's very powerful. I healed my thyroid off of medication, 
We have the homeopathic. It's in a turquoise box. Uh -huh. They're selling it now on Amazon. It's called thyroid support uh -huh. and adrenal support. And uh -huh. I took one of each a day, and I've never was able to get off any kind. And even to, to get on natural thyroid, I, would, I could move. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. I can go to bed, but mm -hmm. now my numbers, two, three, three, yeah. four, all, all of them are perfect. From, it's really great. From the energy of mm -hmm. the thyroid. From the energy of the thyroid. Yeah, and your adrenals are so precious. They're so important for, for so many reasons. And the substances that they warn against in the word of wisdom run those adrenals. They just... just judge them out. So hopefully we can avoid those substances and keep our adrenals strong and healthy. Really important. So is this why when they say that if a woman is having her cycle and mm -hmm. she comes in the presence of another woman, it can start that uh, woman's cycle as well? Is there that frequency? Mm -hmm. Like what this thyroid is doing? Yeah. Is it that mm -hmm. energy or whatever frequency yeah. starts out? Of that? It's so fascinating. So is this the same concept? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is cool. And the type of vitamin C that your thyroid requires is made by the moon through the tomato plant and the potato plant. The nightshade plants actually create the vitamin C that's specific for your thyroid <laughs> to prosper and grow. It's fascinating stuff. And all of this is in Anthony's stuff. So I'm just, I'm just throwing out little tidbits. You can keep asking me questions. I'll keep going on this weird tangent. Anyway, okay, so love. Love's at the top. Love is God. God is love. When we connect to our hearts, we are better able to experience empathy, compassion, and love for others and ourselves and bring more light into our lives. Try to connect with the part of you that loves unconditionally. This is a powerful daily practice that can transform you. Very important. Love. Does anybody have anything to say on that? There are some great exercises for it. And, and I would just say I think that a lot of people need to realize they need to have self-love in their thoughts. Yeah. Because we come down so hard. I hear so often, you know, that as soon as you're tired, mm -hmm. maybe those negative thoughts start to come. Mm -hmm. Or maybe if you had something in life that was an upset, those negative thoughts come. Mm -hmm. um, and so, anyway, that just kind of connects to self-love. It starts here. Mm -hmm. um, it's true. My, um, hypnosis guy when I pray I pray that our bodies and our spirits are connected that we vibrate at the vibrational energy of divine white light energy even that of love energy or, or that mm -hmm. is Christ energy yeah the, the pure love the fruit mm -hmm. was Christ right and so I specifically ask that we vibrate at that divine mm -hmm. light of Christ's love energy absolutely that's very very important yeah absolutely yes I had a client one time and he had esophageal cancer and it was pretty far gone. Mm. And I found out he had a wife that just ragged on him all the time and he would uh. not regurgitate it back. And so that's what was being held in. Oh. And I was mm. laying my hand on his chest trying to heal mm -hmm. that and he just started weeping because he says, I can just feel so much love in your hand. He was not used to feeling love. Mm -hmm. wow. So I love him. Yeah. Heal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely. Healing is, healing is love. Loving is healing. Light. These are all s s the same word. <laughs> this is the same concept, right? Light is love, is empathy, is willingness to mourn with those that mourn, right? To stand in need, to stand and comfort those who need comfort, to strengthen the feeble knees. It's it's what Jesus is the very nature of Jesus is is what we're trying to get at. There's a book called the LDS Gospel of Light, that is it's all about the scientific concept of what light structures are and how we hold light, and that is. I, it seemed redundant the first time I read it, but the second time I read it, it was so profound. <laughs> So I couldn't put it down. So uh, the LDS Gospel of Light just goes into that. It goes into that topic as well. Uh, I think his last name is Brown, but I am not sure. Um, LDS Gospel of Light. I'll look it up for you. I have a book about light and reflection. Yeah. 
Fletcher. Okay, it might be. I'll, I'll look it up for you and send it to you. Brown light, I think. I don't know. <laughs> okay, and compassion. It's interesting with my last name. Uh, I work in the temple. Yeah. How many times I'll have an encounter with someone and have the opportunity to share love with them. And the first thing they'll do is look for my name tag. Uh. <laughs> light. Yeah, that's true. My maiden name is White. That would be cool. It's a Marian light. <laughs> Andrea White light. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, so compassion. So compassion 13. Compassion is at the core of healing. Without compassion, we can't fully understand suffering, which means we can't fully heal. Practice bringing more compassion, understanding, and kindness into your life. So you can ask for, you can ask for compassion when you pray. You can ask for it because most of us don't really get it, like in an unconditional way. We're, we're more on the exchange rate here in the celestial sphere where, you know, I give you this, and you give me something back, and, you know, we re reciprocate, right? So if you don't actually give me back something, then we don't need to be friends anymore, kind of thing. <laughs> it's a really interesting way we are. Um, we don't have that compassion that that we are required to have. In the millennium, we will have, um, because we'll, we're practicing it, compassion. Let me think of the story of Elisha and Naaman. Yeah. That he brought something to you, he wouldn't take it. Yeah, he wouldn't take it, right. Exactly, so that whole give-receive cycle. Let's, there's something about it. We have to give, we have to receive. Yes, in heaven we give and receive, but we give and receive love, and the concepts of love, or the concepts of wisdom that lead to love. The hardest thing in this planet is to know how to love somebody in a way that they will accept it, <laughs> right? Because God is love. He wants to love all his kids, but he knows that certain people are not going to accept his love in the way that, he, in the only way he can get it, which is pure. So he, he pushes other people into their pathway who, who have com enough compassion to see what that need is of their desire and fill it. So... It, there are certain people who are, are making things that we think are mistakes in their life or sins or things like that, but they're actually finding the way that God will fill their love. I, it's fascinating to me. So that's why we can't judge. Right? We have to have compassion. That may be the only way they feel love. So. Here's my book. It's A Spiritual Discussion of Life by Alan J. Fletcher. Ah. And he goes through Newton. And that mm -hmm. when you look through a prism, it's yeah. not all the colors, but when it's not, it's white. Mm -hmm. It is white. It's all combined. Trading places with words of truth equals light. Mm -hmm. Things like that. It's really good. Yeah. So we are all different facets of that pure light. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we can radiate light into somebody's lives who needs it in that frequency. They just need it in that yeah, frequency. something that you can pray for every morning. Yes. Someone that day, mm -hmm. whether you know it or are aware of it or not, right? But you can still be a tool in His hands, exactly, to help lift someone up. To help lift someone up, and it only takes one person. I mean, we could change the world. We can, and I think this group is the entity to start it. I really do. It's co -op. So <laughs> there it is. We're gonna change the world. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard, you know, that we are beings of light. Mm -hmm. And I happened to go to a healing conference just a few weeks ago, and there was an electromagnetic field uh, camera. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, oh, how fascinating. And so I did that. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting to watch the light and where it is in your body. Mm -hmm. And the heart chakra, he says, wow, the whole heart chakra mm -hmm. is completely lit up, mm -hmm. both the front and the back. He says, but wow. put your hands out like this. And then it will show the different lights, uh, colors or whatever. Uh -huh. And he said there's white light that is coming, emulating from your hands. Wow. Are you a, a healer with hands? I said, mm -hmm. No. <laughs> he said, Maybe you should think about it. Uh -huh. And then I had, you know, it's interesting. It was just, it was just, I just wanted the knowledge. Yeah. And the thing that was interesting about it is that then I was placed in a situation that night where a lady said she was having a lot of pain, uh -huh. and I said. And so I went to her and I placed my hands on her. And I just used faith and I used the power yeah. of the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. to emulate that light further. Mm -hmm. And I knew 
and that when I prayed with faith and with that light that could be touched where she was in pain, literally I was told the healing would begin now. Mm -hmm. But because her mind thinks that only the doctor can fix her, that's only when it will actually start. Ah. It could have started right now. Ah. And I thought, wow. That's great. It's great enlightenment. I love that. That's very fancy. <laughs> I, I, I can't help but think of Expecto Patronum. Like, like the Harry Potter books where Harry Potter knew he could do it because he had seen himself do it. Like, I don't know if you watch those, but it's very symbolic of a correspondence. He had, it was a time thing when he went back in time or he went forward in time, something like that. But he saw himself do a spell where he projected light. And this is a really hard, apparently it's hard to do this thing that he could do. He saw his, he thought it was his dad who did it. But when he went back, he's like, oh, it must have been me, so I can do it. So he did it. And I think that's what faith is like too. You have to imagine yourself doing it and knowing that you can do it, and then you do it, and it, and it happens. <laughs> it's really See fascinating. It, become it. Become it. See it. Mm -hmm. Feel it. Become it. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why if you see people in their natural state, yeah. but then you love them for who they really are, they can become who they really are. They really and that's are. what the Lord already sees, because we're already in progress. Right. And He already sees our potential. Yeah, He, he sees us. He knows we're going to be gods and goddesses. Mm -hmm. And we're just going through those steps. Yeah. And so, that's right. And this foundational planet, we have to be here in order to have something to correspond to, right? To build on. So that's it. That's why we're here. Get a foundation, right? Okay, next is affirmations. Affirmations help you to recreate yourself and move forward with movement. Momentum. Momentum is one of our keywords of recent time, right? Let's work with momentum. <laughs> be a visionary for your own life with your thoughts, feelings, and the words you say. It's really an interesting step in there's affirmations and I am this, I am this, I'm becoming this, I want this kind of thing. Okay, humor. Uh, humor protects our central nervous system. <laughs> it keeps the electricity in our body cool. I didn't know that. Just Can you explain that? What's that mean? Say it one more time. Humor protects our central nervous system. It keeps the electricity in our bodies cool. That's interesting. Yeah. Wait, wait I want to record you. Then we need more humor. <laughs> I know. We, we don't have cool humor. electricity these days. Yeah. And it's yeah. becoming something that's not socially acceptable anymore, apparently. Humor. Yeah. Well, humor has become propaganda. Propaganda. Yeah. It's not funny anymore. Yeah. No, it's not funny. Yeah. Well, that's not it's sarcasm. <laughs> Can you say it one more time? That sure. sentence. Humor protects. Right okay, so okay. ready? Humor protects our central nervous system. It keeps our electricity, electricity mm -hmm. in our bodies cool. That's why I like memes. Yeah. Not funny. Yeah. That's true, Tim. <laughs> and I think that means there are some clever ones. Yeah. I think that's why they're injecting humor. Oh, absolutely. Is to help us okay. cool down from it's not, the crap you know, that's happening. Fight or flight, you know, it's just <laughs> yeah. off. That's probably why they say humor helps cancer and patients. Oh, yeah. People. Do you remember The Secret? How many of you watched mm -hmm. The Secret? The lady that got over her cancer because she just watched funny movies and mm -hmm. kept everything light and... and and, uh, yeah, so and that makes perfect sense. God has a sense of humor. I remember. I know that one. <laughs> because Kingsley and the prophets will show their humor. Oh, yeah. You know? And if you're in prayer, sometimes you won't expect it, you know. Mm -hmm. anyway, mm -hmm. Sometimes we'll see a billboard and there'll be a message from Heavenly Father and you'll say, That's not funny, Heavenly Father. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. Yeah. yeah. It's, and, it's then, and then you laugh. Yes. And then you laugh, yeah. Yes. yeah. Quite situational, and multiple witnesses is also very humorous at some point for me. So that's how I get his humor. Cool. Um, show humor, it helps to lighten the heart and ease the mind. It normalizes your blood pressure, mm. it reduces your stress. So laugh as often as possible. Awesome. Live, laugh, laugh. I think yeah. what you're saying is, you know, one of these days we're going to laugh about it. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you might as well do it now. Right. Yes. I laugh. I, I laugh so I don't cry. Oh. Right. That's the one I like. My, my, uh, you got to laugh so you don't cry. Is, I've got good news and I've got bad news. <laughs> Usually I, I, the bad news is I'm in the ER. <laughs> but the good news, I didn't have to go to school that night. <laughs> I had a, if I can tell us quickly, I... Um, I had a blessing one time that said that my home or wherever I was at would not be damaged by the tempest and whirlwinds of the last days. Yeah. Well, I was living in Missouri something <coughs> after this blessing, and we had a microburst go through. And I had trees that needed trimming, and, and I had a double trunk pine tree that went over into the street, and the, all the branches of the old trees came down all around my yard. Uh, I had the neighbors, a huge, big oak tree, come down across our creek, and the entire crown of it landed in my backyard. Uh, and, you know, I had somebody come by and say, what did you do that your yard got wet and so messed up? Uh, well, I will tell you that I had not a branch fall on my tree, on my, on my roof. On your house. The mm -hmm. branches were all around my mailbox. It was not tipped or scratched. I had tomato plants up against the rock wall <clears throat> around where that, the crown of that tree, not one branch or limb was broken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and not only that, but my home teacher's sons, who were in town, came over the next morning about 7 o'clock in the morning and helped. By 11 o'clock, I was the first person. Clear. I was the most messed up. Yeah. <laughs> and my yard was all clean and raked and wood was stacked on the side. Wow. It was such a blessing. But to me, I told my kids, I said, no, this is an example of Henry Father's humor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How badly can we mess up Joanna's yard <laughs> without damaging anything? <laughs> That's and, nice. and it was really interesting because as we watched these, this, these clouds come in, mm -hmm. I felt so confident that we would be safe. Oh, you know? Yeah. And we were. But everything came crashing down. Yeah. It was amazing. That's awesome. That's a great story. I love that humor. I love that. Yeah. A couple of years ago, uh, I heard about a, a group that was a laughter group, and they would meet like on Sunday <laughs> afternoons in the park. Yeah. And just laugh. Really? Yeah. I love that. I love each other. I know. <laughs> great. And there's a great there's a great game that we used to play as a family where we would lay on the ground next to each other, and each of our heads was oh, on the okay. next person's belly. Mm -hmm. Right. And then we would do the ha game, so one person had to say ha, and you had to not laugh. So they would ha, but their head, when they ha, you know, it hits your tummy too. So you're like double incentivized to start laughing on this. It was hard for me. We almost killed one of my sons of my game. Because when he starts laughing, he doesn't stop. Mm. That's a problem. But it's really, it was fun. It was a fun game, the ha game. I want to try that for you You know, I, I had asked, did I tell the story already about the best technique? Okay, so I had asked in prayer. It was a Thursday night. Heavenly Father, I would like to learn the best technique to heal thy children. That I could be the best tool, you know, in your pocket to heal thy children. The next day, my friend calls me up. We're going down south to St. George to learn this technique for healing. I'm like, okay, whatever it is, sign me up, I'll go. And they said, okay, it's called the best technique. <laughs> <laughs> that was so, so I learned the best technique, which is bioenergetic synchronization technique, and it has a lot to do with diet as well, which is keeping alkaline, which is exactly this, and I, I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> so humor, humor is fun, and play, play, play is healing food for our heart and soul. As we express joyful, childlike parts of ourselves, we reduce stress, we strengthen our immune systems, and we soothe our mental anguish. So becoming children, right? So Heavenly Father wants us to become children because heaven is children. Heaven is that state of being where you are choosing innocent. But he wants us to have wisdom too. That's why we have this experience so that we can have wisdom and be childlike at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, play is a food. Um, so if you're watching the Happy Pair as a, a YouTube uh, 
they're twins from Ireland, and they cook food together, and they eat each other's, like out of each other's hamburger or whatever, because they're twins, boys, and um, they exercise while they're cooking, so you could watch them do handstands around the kitchen and things like that, because exercise is food to them, okay? So they're telling you, <laughs> exercise is part of eating. The happy pair. <clears throat> so the happy and pair is P-E-A-R. They're just a pair of Irish twins. <laughs> and they're lots of fun to watch because every time you start a video, they say, they say yo dudes, mm. and then they start their video. And their last name is Bartlett. P-E-A-R. I know. The Bartlett's the Bartlett. in, in, our, uh, in our ward, they awesome. say we're a happy pair. Oh, oh cute. 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 Yeah, that's really cute. <laughs> P-E-A-R. Yeah, happy pair. So just like a real pair. Like a real pair, yeah. Yeah. Happy pair. And okay, so that's play. And then movements. 17 is movement. Movement is critical for health. Explore different types of movement that bring you joy or that feel comfortable while you are healing. Simple stretches or short walks nourish the body deeply without engaging in intense exercise. So he does not want you to go all out. This is not a marathon, people. This is finding joy in the ways that your body can flow and move and finding all of the different things that it can do that you didn't even know your body could do. So I recommend you just because yeah. it's a kind of a journey into what your body can do. Of course, I have discovered that I really like to do ballet. So I'm gonna take a bar class, which is ballet and weightlifting at the same time. So why not? Let's do it. So mm -hmm. yeah, I've learned that after healing, I can do so much more. And that, anybody else have a, con a thing about healing that they wanna include? No? Okay. Freedom. <laughs> okay, feeling like we have the freedom to express ourselves, that we have a choice to heal, and that we can heal brings a deep sense of peace and liberation. Even if you are unwell, you can feel more free by seeing your options to move forward and expressing yourself to a loved one. So being able, being, feeling free to communicate, to have your ideas be acknowledged even if they don't agree and, and things like that. We all have ideas that we don't agree on, but we agree on the most important things, that we should be free to express them. And that's that's really what we're fighting for. And um, I think that's, this is what, these are the steps. Cool. There is a website for affirmations that is called thevirtuesproject.com, and they actually have, you can order the cards, but it will have um, what it looks like and then an app, you know, I am. Um, statement. And there, there are 52 weeks of, to me, they're like family home eating lessons, but I would send my missionaries an affirmation and you can, they have them free and you, you know, on their, their website too. The Virtues Project? Uh huh. Okay. Cool. And if you remember uh, uh, the secret she had downloaded, and she has an I am page that's got the lines on it, it shows the little secret thing. Is that so you can write. Uh, probably the secret.com, yeah. And uh, you could just write down. And, and a lot of real estate, you know, would be the salesperson. You have affirmations. I am this. I am that. I am. I am. Yeah. And it's that belief system that I am. And then as powerful, I am is another name for God. It so, is. yeah. Bringing it into. Yes. Bringing it into. That higher power. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Anthony says it doesn't have to be. You don't have to not include nots because it's not semantic. But God knows your intents of your heart. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not like you know you can say things like I don't want to be sick anymore. I don't want to deal with this anymore. Like you can really say that because that's in that your so heart, sense. and God knows that. Yeah. So like I just don't want this is really is important to say as well. You can say that. You have freedom. To say exactly what you think and feel. You don't have to put it in the present tense with it. I, like, I always have to be positive because you're mm -hmm. whatever. No, you're, you're, God knows. 
If you're hurting, sometimes it's okay to say, why? Exactly. <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> God really even knows that you can be mad at him. He understands what you're going through. He has compassion. Yeah. yeah. What, and, and that's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. It's in the Yeah. Yes. This is what I want to trade for. This is what I do. This is what I want to trade for. Yeah. This is what I see. This is what I want to trade for. So you're getting the vision and ready. It gives you that formula. But if you don't, if you can't even con conceptualize that, but you're just speaking out loud and you're speaking your heart, then the Lord knows. Then the Lord knows. Yes. <laughs> that, that one book that I keep promoting in the Fearless Mind goes through how to envision the way that you want things to go and then they become. Yeah, um, and he's a professor at BYU. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we get caught up in fear. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, well, it's really true. Your words have power. What was she saying? Oh, the trading post. The trading oh, post. The trading post. It's, mm -hmm. it's part of the ready for wholeness okay. that oh. we're taking. Yeah, it's just one of the tools to see what you've got, what you don't want anymore, and to replace it, what you replace it with. Kind of like an R&R. &R. I repent of this, yeah. I choose to do that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, I like that oh, I visual of the trading post. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. Move, restore, reclaim, mm -hmm. and reorganize. Reorganize. Yeah, reorganize. Yeah. 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 Are there any questions about that healing? This is great. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. And it fits in with everything. It does. Yeah. Absolutely. And it, you don't have to be perfect. You could just <laughs> No, this is everything that we do as Sisters of Liberty. Everything all encompassed. And I love the eternity sign. I know, yeah. I didn't pick that out until you said that. Yeah. You and I'm usually a symbols person, so I'm like, <laughs> I missed that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And as soon as you get it for yourself, it's inevitable you want to share it with somebody else. And he gets you to that green place, and then you're like, but now everybody has to know. It's almost like eating that white fruit from the tree of life. Like, no, oh, everybody needs to know. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.